Colin had a problem and a microphone to spare. Thomas took it up and so the podcast went to air. For weeks and months they trolled through every single DVD. They've unwrapped all the ones they can and now they're cellulose free. Now they're cellulose free. Hello dear listener and welcome to Cellulose Free. My name is Colin and with me is my new co-host, Alan. Hello, I am Alan. Hello, Alan. What have you been up to, Alan? Oh, um, <laughs> well, a, a few minutes ago, I didn't exist. Alan! And and a minute ago, I still didn't exist. <laughs> uh, and about 30 seconds ago now, uh, I popped fully formed into your head. <laughs> Excellent. Shall we try that again? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Let's put it this way. Can you keep up this uh, somewhat questionable accent? Uh, probably not. No. Okay. Hello, dear listener, and welcome to Cellulose Free. My name is Colin, and with me as always is my fellow film watcher, compadre, and son, Thomas. Hi. Hello. This I've got this feeling of deja vu. I've got this feeling of deja vu. I have this feeling of deja vu. We, we've... We've started again. We have. Right at the very beginning. <laughs> yes. We a, a completely different podcast mm-hmm. that resembles in no way, shape or form a podcast that we may have done before. <laughs> um, this podcast um, is... Well, can you explain what this podcast is? Okay. So, uh, a couple of years ago now... Uh, there was a contest the road was running and the contest was to make a very short pilot for a podcast and the idea that you came up with was to select a film at random from the shelf that you had not watched and watch it yes and discuss it yes and at the time I believe you had the intention that there might be a rotating guest host. Um, That that didn't pan out. No. No, I got stuck Um, with someone. Yeah. Got stuck with Alan. Hello. (laughs) Hello, Alan. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to our our guest podcaster, Mm. Alan. Yes. um, You ended up with me, Mm -hmm. um, and I stuck around... And guest hosts did not eventuate. No. At any point. No, I tried. Oh, how I tried. No, I didn't. I didn't even uh, bother. It sort of worked. It worked for us. Yeah. The, the format worked and we worked our way through the stack of DVDs that were on the shelf that I hadn't seen. And uh, then they ran out. And they did. And the podcast ended. Mm. And that was it. Or so we thought. Well, we we weren't really thinking that. We'd, we'd sort of been thinking about what would come next for yeah, months. Yeah, and months beforehand. Yeah. Um, and look, we, we enjoyed the format so much. We enjoyed the time together so much and uh, sort of kicking everyone else out of the room to watch a movie seemed like a good idea at the time and still seems to be. So we're going to keep doing what we do worst, and <laughs> yeah, and it is, that is watch film, mm-hmm. and then talk rubbish about it mm-hmm. in our completely unprofessional uh, manner, and and then do do a bunch of stuff after that. Yep, and then that will be it, mm. and you can join us or not. Yeah, as the case may be. The selection, obviously, is going to be somewhat different. Yes. Um, um, because we're, we're not selecting from a a set, uh, defined uh, parameter, that being films that I had bought but have never got round to watching. Mm. What's the parameters this time? The parameters is a film that one or both of us are interested in watching and discussing. 
Yeah. <laughs> so we've we've given ourselves something to work from uh, to begin with. Um, mm-hmm. Both of us have gone through the database of DVDs that are on the shelf uh, using the wonderful, uh, and this is an unpaid promotion. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm not endorsed by or paid by the uh, uh, the company in question. The uh, the app is called My Movies, and it's mm-hmm. available on Apple and Google Play, and uh, there's also a PC version of it that enables you to catalogue all of your DVDs. And me being the, with the mindset that I have, um, I love doing that. Mm. And it also allows you to put tags on films on that database. And I've tagged through films that I'd like to revisit, and I've done the same with some of mine, and there's some in there that I haven't seen. Yeah, and there there are some that I've selected that uh, I have failed Thomas miserably in mm. not having uh, exposed him to certain films. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. So, as, as, as far as picking them out goes each week, um, it... it It'll probably be a bit slapdash, to be honest. I I think we'll probably um, alternate back and forth uh, uh, unless something interesting happens. Mm. Most weeks, I'd expect we'd just be selecting films at random from one or both of the lists. Yep. Um, Yeah. Um, the, The problem with the... Uh, this method now and and it was the problem last time um, in that all of the films we watched for some reason or another I bought Mm. and so I was exposing Thomas to movies that he may not have had any interest whatsoever in watching but I obviously had somewhat of an interest because I bought them and so is the case with uh, the majority of the the catalogue that we'll be selecting from uh, again this time. However, I think both of us also have um, formulated our own lists of things that aren't necessarily on the shelf that we can access Mm. from other domains. Uh, Well, I I haven't formulated the list yet, but it's it's something I've got to get to. (laughs) All right. Well, I, I have used the wonderful app Just Watch Oh, you can you can you can wish flag list, yeah you can add a oh. wish list to uh, to films on that. So oh. I've got quite a collection of films that are available on streaming services that I've right tagged now. on the app. Sorry, that are on streaming services right now. Right now, <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> next week, it, it may be entirely different, which is the the a thing that we've really come to realise in the last couple of years is that. Uh, this argument that, oh, I don't need to hang on to a disc because I'll be able to get it on streaming um, yeah, until next week when suddenly uh, one streaming service decides to drop it from their, their library. and yeah. Collectively, I think we have, what, four different streaming services right now? Yeah. And sometimes that's not enough. No, it's not. Uh, look, the number I've tagged in Just Watch that aren't available on streaming service. Um, the, the joy of this app, again, is that uh, if it suddenly does become available on a streaming service in Australia, or uh, I don't know how accessible it is in other countries, this app. Yeah, it's reasonably accessible. Okay. Um, it will actually ping me if a uh, film on my wanting to watch list suddenly becomes available or uh, on one of these streaming services. So, And then it will turn out to have been on Foxtel now. Oh, no, be no very I've, 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 blocked, <laughs> I've blocked Foxtel now. I've only got it so that it pings for streaming services that we're signed up for. Um, it seems rather excessive that uh, we've got access to so many streaming services, but um, the flip side of that is that... I want you to imagine how much you pay currently for a movie ticket. And if our whole family wants to go to a particular movie together, multiply that number by eight. Yeah. For one movie. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the the obligatory 
um, choc top mm-hmm. ice cream. Yeah. Um, I refuse to buy popcorn, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Any, anyway, so uh, temper the the whole um, excessiveness of streaming services with the fact that we very rarely go to the pictures mm-hmm. um, because it's so ridiculously expensive. Um, and the way that the world has been rocked so much in the last mm-hmm. year, um, yeah. the uh, keenness to go to the pictures, I think, has been reduced. And that has been recognised by uh, many movie companies and a lot of companies are going to be releasing films on streaming services a lot quicker, I think. so. Um, yeah, I'm... And I'm I'm hoping I have my fingers crossed that in April I'll be able to watch No Time to Die. If if you've been following along, you'd know that I've been watching Bond films. Yes, Ho- uh, hopefully April. But um, I will I will try and twist my own arm to go to the pictures and see that myself. Um, in fact, we'll probably go together. Mm. We might even do a special. Uh, yeah. Podcast for that. That'd be weird. Yeah, with, um, with no spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We, we've we handled spoilers in weird ways before. We but, have. Um, that's neither here nor there. That isn't. We're uh, rambling on. We are. Um, so that's, that's our point of difference between last podcast that we did and the new podcast. So we're going to be starting off with an entirely new catalogue of films to Mm. watch. Yep, entirely new. Entirely new. Thomas, you took it upon yourself to choose, without consulting with me, Mm. uh, what we're going to be watching for our very, very first episode. And I'm intrigued to know what that is. Okay. So, first of all, some context. A couple of years back now, Started the podcast in, in that one minute pilot. You rolled the the virtual dice and you picked out Troll Hunter. And then we watched that film. Yes. And we talked about it. And that episode was under 15 minutes. <laughs> that didn't last. No. That didn't last at all. No, it didn't. Uh, we were still um, getting onto our feet, or whatever mm. the, the phrase is, uh, getting used to the whole podcasting thing. Um, yeah. In fact, we have now recorded almost more than uh, the, that entire <laughs> podcast went, uh, and we haven't even started mm. this one. Um, that, what? So, right, okay. That, so, that context yes. in place, Yes. the film that I have selected... For mm-hmm. this first episode of this new podcast, is also Troll Hunter, the remake. No, no, it's no. the same film. The same film. We are going to discuss <laughs> the same film in this first episode. <laughs> okay, um, so it's it's sort of like uh, one of those um, uh, clip shows. <laughs> we we're, we're just going to replay the entirety of the first episode of um what was the name of our still old podcast wraps. still under wraps <laughs> uh, he jokes because uh the number of times he recorded and now he's talking in the third person mm. um the number of times that uh i had to record the intro because I wanted to say still under wraps in the intro. Um, yes. You'll work it out eventually. Yeah, so no, we're not going to make it a clip show. We are going to watch the film. The joy of this is that I really can't remember this movie at all. No, I can't either. I, I remove, remember snippets of it um, mm-hmm. and certainly don't remember um, not enjoying it. Mm-hmm. Um, and the fact that it is on the shelf still suggests that uh, we considered it worthy of staying on the shelf. <laughs> so, mm. so that's what we're watching. It is. Uh, which means um, I get to choose next week's. Yes. Yes. Probably at random this time. Oh, yes, it will be at random. But Thomas was uh, uh, deliberate in his, yes. in his suggestion for, for this movie. And... I think I did a very convincing job of pretending that I didn't know what we were watching today. No, 
you've you've known for probably a couple of weeks yes, now. Yes, yes, but I'm sure our dear listener was completely convinced that I had no idea. Mm. No idea. Clueless. Are we getting stuffed? Yeah. Yeah. Thomas is going to unwrap that. No, he's not. No. We're going to watch this. We are. And then we're going to talk about it. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll do that. And I'm not going to say catch you on the flip side. Turn to side B. You <laughs> crawl. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, we <dear>. win. <laughs> Same old, same old. Yeah, let, let's let's talk about this film again. Okay. <laughs> so we're not same old, same old. We, uh, uh, well, because we've s- both seen it, haven't we? Mm. So me saying, so what did you think, is completely... So we can't same old, same old, can we? Well, we sort of can, because I, I, didn't, I didn't remember a lot about the film. Um yeah, it was good. I really thoroughly enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, it was solid. Um, it could possibly have lost about 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how long that would have made it, but th- there were a couple of dips that that felt like it was chugging. Um, <laughs> well, you know, it was a rough edit. <laughs> yeah, it was a rough edit, and they... <laughs> They did clarify that at the, at the, the beginning. Um, and, and I'm possibly being unfair saying that because it was establishing things and and there were numerous clever ideas that were still being shared through mm. those times where it slowed down a bit. Um, you know, the, the positioning of rocks and things like that um, w- was a slow area, but... but mm. Very clever. So, um, that sort of world building is important. Yeah, yeah. Um, what I find amazing about that film is that it can simultaneously be completely deadpan, but wink at the camera mm. at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, it com- completely convincing characters. Yet you also see a glint in there. I, I don't know how that works. You you just. Uh, it should be noted that much of the cast of this film is fairly well known Norwegian comedians. Right. Okay. Good. Um. <laughs> um. That that. And that must have been really hard. Uh, a hard. S- How would that have sold in Norway? Um, would it have been funnier for them, um, or or more of a um, a chore to suspend disbelief? I I find that really hard to grasp. It, it makes perfect sense. But I know that the number of times, wherever you see a familiar face, uh, mm-hmm. a, a Australian actor's face uh, in a film, that the, you're familiar with their their past, especially comedians. Mm. Um, Eric Banner, for example, uh, who has gone on to uh, have a, a, a quite successful, serious motion picture career, started off in Australian comedy. Um, and so I grew up with him... You know, doing uh, comedic Australian weekly comedy, so for him to suddenly uh, start appearing in in serious stuff, it took a lot of convincing. But to add the extra bit of this being a a mockumentary, mm. um, it just adds an extra layer to the suspension of disbelief. But yeah, that that makes real perfect sense. It, it could only be pulled off, I think, with a good deadpan comedian, um, mm. and there was a number of them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you got vets, you got bear hunters, you've got all manner of uh, you know, and serious <laughs> government, uh, and all done in the the guise of 
being caught on camera, um, mm. n- not, uh, you know, in a way that it doesn't appear that they're delivering lines. And it was just so spot on, which is interesting because there's a couple of shows that I've been trying to watch recently, some TV shows, um, and my major hang-up with them is that some of them are written in such a way that the delivery of lines, not through any fault of the actors, Mm -hmm. feels completely artificial. You've got people who are saying things that they wouldn't say. Um, whereas here, uh, he was trying to pull off the the fact that the, you know, they're just making off the cuff comments, um, but uh, it was just spot on um, you know, and, and completely convincing. So yeah, um, having had a look at what's on offer for special features, yes, on the there there is a bit of improv. Oh, I, I, and I don't don't doubt it. Um, it would have benefited so much from that, um, <laughs> except uh, the 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 trick of keeping in character. And, mm. and there were occasionally some times where you felt like maybe somebody has just delivered one of those improv lines, and mm. and, and uh, yeah, it it, <laughs> oh, it really is a. A delicious film, mm. and for all of its um, dark themes, mm-hmm. it's—I I don't know what the right word is. I was going to say a safe film. It, it doesn't—it's um, not gratuitous in any way. Um, mm. There are occasional points where um, there are little bits of, of um, sudden splatter. That, mm, that mm-hmm. um, are done that you don't know whether to laugh or go Ugh, at um, because again there's that vibe of you are meant to be taking this seriously wink wink nudge nudge <laughs> uh, it, it's just such a bizarre balance did, did mm. you did you feel that Is yeah it, yeah um, let's briefly touch on visual effects yes there's there's a lot of visual effects in this film yep and and. Reasonably obvious yes. visual effects, but yep. it's 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 pretty well masked. They they've they've managed to pick where they're using their visual effects yep. in places where it's 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 already a little hazy, like it it's dark and yep. there's very harsh lighting. Yep. Or night vision. So yeah. Yeah. Yep. Things get out of the way, or it's foggy out and dark, and you can't quite make out details yeah. because it's foggy and dark. Yep. Yep. And they certainly also took advantage of, um, and and it's it's something that's often forgotten, I think, in in <laughs> films that have a frightening, um, unknown presence uh, as its main theme. For the most part of the the beginning section, at least, didn't it just just so showed, showed glimpses and and let you build up mm. the and and then have the money shot and and the reveal and then go back to you know glimpses and um, I mean Alien is is the prime example of that um, you know ninety five percent of the film you don't see the alien. Now this was was far more gratuitous in in its exposure of um, the trolls, mm. but um, that build up at the beginning, um, there was still the just glimpses and and being economical with their exposure. So mm. the, the, there's a question of of how much of that quote unquote extra content you could even cut out without sabotaging the slow burn. Yeah, yeah. It is is good film. <laughs> it is good film. Um, a question, and I probably asked this the first time around, or maybe not. We we only went for 15 minutes, but uh, the budget for, for that? Uh, the budget was uh, 19 million Norwegian kroner. Ah, <laughs> And I'm just doing that calculation in my head. 
Um, uh, 3.5 million US. Oh, I got 3.6. Oh. 3.5 million US. Mm-hmm. That was just that was solid. Mm-hmm. Um, did they recoup their costs within country, do you know? Or? Um, I believe so. Right. It's... It's it's unclear looking at this uh, what they're referring to when they say box office. They could be referring to domestic box office. Yep. And I suspect it wouldn't have seen much cinema play elsewhere. Oh, I, I very much doubt it, but I believe it does have quite a following, um, certainly on... Uh, well, the, the fact that... I could buy the Blu-ray locally. Uh, yes, this is a Madman. Madman, uh, that, that makes sense. But uh, the fact that it's on Blu-ray uh, mm. in Australia, available, uh, it and it's, it's a foreign film, um, mm. does s- suggest that uh, elsewhere around the world, it's it also um, probably did fairly well on the. Um, straight to video market so yeah if you can get your hands on it i i strongly recommend um yeah it it's just so well balanced um mm. in, in its um you know tenseness comedic uh, black um comedy yes. just you got slow burn you've got pretty good foreshadowing yep it's it it's very good. Yeah, yeah, ah, oh, love it, absolutely love it. Um, <laughs> I don't have to say it's staying on the shelf, do I? Well, it is. I mean, it who is knows? On we the shelf. we may come across films in this uh, this series that we suddenly decide, huh? Why do I still have that? <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> wasn't as good as I recalled it being. So in fact, it it wasn't. It wasn't good. <laughs> good. That was great. Yes. Um, okay. Um, so, on to our next segment. The following segment has no title. Thank you. Wow. Thanks. Thanks me from a few hours ago. That's <laughs> very helpful. That was, uh, yes. Apparently this segment has no title. Um, does it have a jingle? Uh, it... It, it 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 has whatever just happened just now. Oh, okay. You you haven't heard so it. If I go into the future, I will pop the jingle in back behind us. Mm. There we go. That's great. Very catchy. <laughs> it's not, not exactly a jingle, but it's no. it's certainly it's certainly audio. So. That's the first uh, episode under our belts, pretty much. Mm. We need to decide what we're watching next week. Um, now, what I'm going to suggest in this segment, because we, we're still f- formulating ideas and, and, and things like that, but I would ask our dear listener, our one dear listener... <laughs> To have a good think, and um, for those of you hardened dear listeners who have been uh, here from from the beginning of our first podcast, um, there may be a film that has been on your mind that uh, has never been mentioned anywhere in the podcast that is a, a, a hidden gem that we haven't mentioned. If there's something that you can recommend, certainly... Uh, pop it in uh, our uh, email bag. Is that where it's? Don't know. <laughs> we have somewhat of a dilemma here. Um, the the podcast nearly didn't go ahead because we came to blows. Um, <laughs> um, so I'm carefully not saying. Just make a suggestion on our Facebook page mm. um, because some of our dear listeners may not find Facebook the place that they are going to congregate. So, um, look, make a suggestion on our... There is going to be a Facebook page. In fact, there already is. Mm. Um, There is also a Twitter Mm. account. And uh, all of these will be on the show notes, as will an email address. 
If you don't use any of those but want to drop us a line via email, you can certainly do that. Or leave us an audio message if you're listening listening on Anchor. I An- believe that's all set up. Yes, still. Anchor does have a uh, an option to to leave it. I think it's thirty seconds or a, don't know three minutes or something like that. Just give us a, a shout as to a movie that you really think that we should. We don't want ridiculous mm. suggestions. Um, uh, we're saving the ridiculous uh, suggestions up for when we do our Italian robot films <laughs> marathon. And, <laughs> and and send us ideas for what we could possibly do with this segment. That that's right. As of yet, yes, and probably for the foreseeable future, has no title. That's right. Um, yeah. So we'd love your input. Um, that still throws us into the realms of what are we watching next week? And Which I still have not come up with a new piece of music for. Okay. Um, so here it is. Pick a film for next week so we can go to bed. Thanks me from the future. <laughs> Hastily coming up with that in the next... Next... Um, <laughs> uh, well, it's 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 9.54 now. I'll be hearing the ukulele at 3 o'clock in the morning. So I've got, what, another 20-ish hours to come up with it? <laughs> um, yes, that's the other thing. Uh, these will not be coming out uh, in the middle of our evening. I am adamantly making a promise to myself that I'm not going to go straight into editing this and staying up till all hours. I shall start editing in the morning. So it will come out 7pm Australian... Eastern. Eastern time. time. Whatever that happens to be at the time Uh, of year. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Australian Eastern time Mm. with the standard or summer. Daylight. Or daylight. Anyway, so <laughs> uh, that's when it's coming out. Um, but <laughs> next week, next week, I'm bringing up my my movies database, mm. and I'm selecting the flag of your list. My list. Okay, so I'm going to shake my phone, which automatically randomly selects something from that filtered list. And then I am going to read the plot synopsis to Thomas as I'm reading. Let's see how quickly he can work out what it is. You look amused. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Now, as I'm looking, I need to just make sure, because I think it is... um, Yes, it is actually a double whammy. This is a film that Thomas also has on his list. Okay. Okay. So, let's see how many words I need to get in through the description that's listed on the My Movies database. Okay. You ready? Okay. First word. Bueller? Bueller? (laughs) Sorry, Uh. not here. Instead, high schooler, Uh, Ferris Bueller, Matthew Broderick. His girlfriend, Sloane, Sloane? Sloane, I Sloan, think, yeah. Mia Sloan. <laughs> and his best bud, Cameron, Alan Ruck, who is also in Star Trek Generations, I think, are off on the spontaneous romp through Chicago known as... Fel- Ferris Bueller's Day Out. Day Off. Day- Ferris right, Bueller's off, Day yes. Off. You'll also he, he does have a day out during the day off. But he does. Yes. You'll also enjoy righteous bonus materials that give you an insider's peek at this hilarious comedy hit from John Hughes. So, barf up a lung, forge a sick note from your parents, and tag along on the funniest adventure to ever sweep through the Windy City. What are you still doing here? Save Ferris! Which... My understanding is makes uh, reference to uh, certain incidents in the film. Yeah. I have not watched this in years. It has been it's absolute ages. It would have only been very shortly after the film came 
out, I suspect, that mm. I first saw this in, in yeah, 1986. Uh, I probably saw it in 87 on video, mm. I reckon. Been been a year or two for me, I think. Oh, so you've seen it too. I have. Oh, you saw it at... I think I saw it on a streaming service at some point. Okay. Because it's supposed to be a good film. Mm. <laughs> yep. So, Matthew Broderick, we are going to uh, be enthusiastically watching. So, a bit of comedy, a bit of light comedy to to really start the ball rolling into the randomness of things. And, and so, as my quote-unquote steady ukulele plucking... Yeah, it goes on for some time, play, doesn't it? ...plays underneath us. Yeah. We've... We've made it to the we end have. of the first episode. We have. How long has that been? Oh, I've forgotten to hit record. Oh, bother. We've made it to the end of our second first episode. And this is probably pretty much what you're going to be in for. Mm. Uh, as we uh, sort of round off the edges even more and polish it. <laughs> Possibly not so much time spent on the intro. <laughs> yeah. Um... So we hope that you can join us next week when we watch Ferris Bueller's A Day Off. And until then, we'll catch you next time. Bye. You have been listening to Cellulose Free. Your hosts were Colin, who produces and edits the show, and Thomas, who makes the artwork and music. Cellulose Free is recorded in the Deranged Cat Studios in scenic Tasmania, Australia. We keep track of our extensive physical media collection through My Movies, which we highly recommend. You can find links to that, as well as other places you can find us in the show notes. Cellulose Free is a Hi Hello production. So it will come out at... Uh, now, you said I, 7 I o'clock think, local, didn't I you? I think 7 o'clock local works. So 5 o'clock local is... What's the problem with that one? Does, uh, does, it's just a bit early. Is it's it? It's just a bit early. I don't know. A um, bit early for who? But it's a bit late for others, isn't it? 7 is a bit late for others? Uh, what? what, <laughs> what <laughs> What do you want from me? <laughs> oh no. Um, time zones. <laughs> okay, Google, when is the optimum time to release a podcast? Here's a summary from the website blog.podbean.com. The most important time period for podcasts is Monday to Wednesday in the morning. Oh, well, we're toast <laughs> anyway, aren't we? We are. can improve, it would help to know how satisfied you are with that answer. No. Oh, gi- three. Give it a three. Choosing songs is only available. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Google, stop. I just sort of vaguely recall five o'clock Australian time was. Anyway. <laughs> I like 7 p.m. 7 p.m. is a nice time. It works. <laughs> okay. So, 7 p.m.